So now we're joined by Adrian Archer, who is the Managing Director of Beard and Fitch. Welcome to the show, Adrian. Hello, Lindsay. Hello. <laughs> right. Oh. I was going to say, gear manufacturing, is that right, Adrian? No, we're not gear manufacturers, really. What, Sorry. <laughs> what we're all about is transmission components. So we'll make gears, yes, certainly, and we'll make spines, shafts, anything that basically goes round and drives another piece of equipment. Oh, it's like Paul when he goes out in his car, just going round and round and round. <laughs> so, worms and wheels, hubs? Yeah, worms and wheels. There you go on the screen. That's yeah, the only reason um, you invited me here today, isn't it? It's we, to get that one out. We make a whole range of things like pump gears, um, and that's probably the most common thing we manufacture is pump gears. We make those and we export those to America. Okay. Um, is this the average size of the component going through your... Um, no, we can cut part? gears as we said, part of our service is cutting only, so we will take other people's uh, free issue components in and we'll, we'll cut the gears for them. And we can go up to 1.2 metres on that. So it's quite big. And then we go right down to tiny little things. Oh, this new product we recently manufactured off our Nakamura. Which we so may complete. That that is an interesting concept. That one there, Adrian. Tell us about how you how you make that. Well, the customer came to us with a problem with consensus between two parts, so we had to overcome that as a, as an issue. So we we elected to make the the brass component separately on the on the Dusen machine, just as a simple flat washer, which we then gave to the operator on the Nakamura, who is machining the rest of the spindle and the gear in one in in one setup, and then stop cycle. We take the little brass washer, for want of a description, insert it onto the shaft and then restart the cycle. And in the cycle, it comes up with a little pusher which pegs the, the brass gear to the shaft and then we cut that gear in situ. So we know that the two gears are completely concentric to one another. So do you cut the finished cut of the two gears at the same time? Not at the same time. You cut the first one yeah. as a shaft. So you've got that sort of laying as a shaft. Then we, then we press fit that on, fix it and then cut that in situ. So we know that those two parts are perfectly concentric to one another. And the customer's absolutely delighted with the, with the product. Is that your own uh, idea? One of my operators, to be honest. Is that not your, you can't take the... Uh, no, I can't take, can't take the... No, what, the operator, a very good chap, um, been working with us so a year or so now. Um, excellent, yeah, very how, good idea. How many people work at the company? There are 30 people in total, 20-odd um, on the shop floor, uh, and they range in, in skills from an apprentice uh, who's coming up, finishing his apprenticeship now, uh, going right up to people that have been moving in 20, 20 plus years, 30 years or so, wow. in some of them. And how many machines? We've got about 80 machine tools in total within the shop. Um, I mean, I've got a list here. I've got, you've got Hitachi C keys, you've got Doosan's le uh, XYZ, Leadwell, Puma's Nakamura, you've got loads of big names. And yeah, we've got a good cross-section of machines. We've got uh, quite a lot of, obviously CNC you've mentioned, but we also use a lot of traditional gear cutting machines. We've got Reichau gear grinding machines. Uh, we've got some maxi cuts and hobbers. Um, we've, got some, we've got a module hobber that came from out of East Germany originally, but it's now got CNC bolted onto it. And did uh, you did you start as a business doing the gear cutting and the gear hobbing, and then migrate into the machining as well? No, the company so, was founded in 1851, oh, so that's kind of a fantastic uh, pedigree, really. Um, and it's done all sorts of things throughout history. Yeah, we got involved in, in Malcolm Campbell's 1927 Bluebird um, speed record that was done on pending sands. Um, and then through the war, obviously, the company was making components for torpedoes and all sorts of things through both world wars. And then moved to Harlow in the 60s when Harlow was coming out as a new town. Uh, I, I got involved with the company in about 76, I think it was. Um, I'd done my apprenticeship originally with the company and left and, and was asked to come back by the original owners, Mr Beard and the family. Oh, okay. And then eventually took the company over fully. And uh, today we're, we're looking to take the company forward over the next few years. Mm. Yeah, next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, hopefully. We can keep it going that long. So Adrian, we've got a couple more minutes left because we do um, have a time scale, but it's not just the normal work that you go for, is it? It is all gear work, anything pretty much that turns. Yes, that's correct. I mean, we will get involved with other work. Um, this is a, a part from a, a model jet engine made in Mexico, and we supply uh, several hundred of those in, in, uh, every few months, really, to, to Mexico. And we got involved purely because we were doing the gears for them and they asked us if we would look at just a shaft. And we wouldn't normally look at that type of work. But if it's, if it's a customer making transmission components and they want other type of work, we will, we will get involved. And left-handed thread, I can see from here with my Hawkeye. Yeah, left-handed thread, that's uh, yeah. I told you that, very good, you? very that good. Spot on. And a lot of the work here, it, it, there's assembly to this as well, isn't there? So it's not just about making the parts, it's about... Yeah, I mean, we, we originally set up a cell to manufacture these gearboxes. We spent a good £600,000 setting that up. 
We were making about 400, 450 of these a month at one time. But that's our general what we do. We don't tend to make mass producing ten of thousands. We tend to be looking at repeat work every month, but in, in volumes ranging from 10 off to, to 50, 60, 100, 200 off. We also do the occasional one off as well, because I think, if I say to you, Panther Clutch? Oh yes, Panther Clutch, yeah. We get involved in some historical vehicle stuff, which is quite nice. We've got a lot of skill sets, so we can reverse engineer parts. It's, it's not our main business, but we, we, we do look to do that for people. Um, we can use it in our advertising and our marketing as indeed we're doing today. I notice you've got uh, Rolls-Royce accreditation as well on your website. With the area that you're located in Harlow, there is quite a lot of aerospace manufacturer around there. If you look at some of the other businesses that you that, might necessarily you might yeah. may compete with, are you in, included in that too? We don't actually get involved with aerospace work at the moment. It's, it's something on the horizon we're looking at. Um, it's certainly not something we're doing at the moment. Uh, the Rolls Royce we were involved with there was diesel engines, mainly for marine applications. We do quite a lot of work with uh, diesel, diesel engine manufacturers. Because there's quite a hub of m machining businesses around Harlow, isn't there? And the Essex area? There is, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite diverse now, because at one time when I first started out in engineering, we had a lot of large companies in Harlow, but now they've all come down smaller companies. Modern machine tools have, have enabled companies to make a lot more with a lot less people. To kind of sum up, you're the only specialist gear manufacturer on the MTD network, so are you busy? Yeah, we are busy at the moment, and hopefully with the help of MTD, we're going to move forward and, and bring on a lot more clients. Uh, we, we're certainly looking to expand. We're, we're thinking about our next investment as the parts we're making now, you know, we're getting involved with a lot of work now, which we're trying to reduce setup times on. We're trying to reduce the amount of movements within the workshop. So we're looking to try and go for more like one hit machining if we can. Um, and right now it's very much in the melting pot as to which machines we're going to buy, but that's what we're looking for at the There's moment. There's so much value in that one hit machining, isn't there? I mean, it reduces the footprint of cells, also makes your parts in one hit accurately. Yeah, from a financial aspect, it's, it's the throughput. If you can get the throughput through your workshop, then your cash flow, everything starts to, to fall into line. And we are very busy at the moment. Oh, is that your five minutes? It must be. <laughs> I don't know what that was, really. On that note, guys, I've got to shoot because Carl's in for an MOT, so I need to get away. Good to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, see you yeah. later. Thanks for popping Paul. in, Paul. Um, can I just ask you one more question? What brings you to the MTD network? We have a fantastic facility in Harlow, and we've got a lot of capacity that we can fill. We can go to another shift, we can take on more people. We're currently trying to engage two more apprentices. Uh, so there's a lot of scope for us to expand our business. Mm. I like how you are a little bit more dedicated or specialist in what you do as well. I think you need to get down to that company. Well, Adrian doesn't know, but we are teed up to come down end of the month, hopefully, to do some filming. He's more than welcome. More than welcome. <laughs> we'll even supply tea and coffee. Perfect. And cake. And cake, yeah. He likes we'll cake. try. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Thank you.